あるオッケー Ah, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Oh, oh. oh I'm doing it. Yes. <laughs> If you hear me, lift your finger, lift your thumb. Ah, very good. Very good.、Um, Okay, last time I spoke on uh, uh, right understanding. As I said, right understanding is explained in uh, uh, 15 ways, but I mentioned only one, and others are too much detail for you. And therefore, today I want to go to the next one in the Noble Eightfold Path. Noble Eightfold Path, I hope you all remember. Do you remember them? Noble Eightfold Path? Yes. Okay. At least I heard one say yes. I hope you all remember all the eight.、Uh, could that、uh, person who said yes, could you repeat the eight for me?、Okay. So that everybody can hear. Right understanding, right thought, right. Speech, right action, right living movement, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Very good, very good. These are the eight of the Noble Eightfold Path. So, last time I spoke on right、uh, understanding, only one of the 15 ways of right understanding I mentioned last time. As I said, others <coughs> are too much detail for you, and therefore now I go to the next one right thought. <coughs> uh, today I speak about uh, uh, 30 minutes, and then、uh, I want you to ask me questions. That way, we will have、uh, an engaged discussion. Otherwise,、uh, if I keep talking all the time, that may sometimes seem a little too much. And you also may not be able to concentrate that long. Therefore, I plan to speak for 30 minutes first. Right thought. What are the right thought? Right thought are thought of letting go. In other words, thought of generosity.、Uh, the second is there are three types of right thought. Right thought, uh, thought of uh, letting go. In Pali, it is called Nekkama Sankappa. Nekkama Sankappa. N E K K H A M M A Sankappa. S A M K A P P A Sankappa. Nekkama Sankappa. Let it go. In other words, we call it generosity. Uh, I talk about generosity later on.、Uh, then, this, this is an outline.、Uh, then, the second is、uh, Avyapada, thought of loving friendliness. Sometimes we call it Metta, Metta thought. <coughs> 
third is uh, thought of compassion, karuna, karuna thought. These are the three kinds of right thoughts. Now, the thought of generosity uh, is number one. Sacrificing, uh, offering things, giving things away, giving things to uh, monastics, monastics, monks, nuns, and so forth, or giving things to uh, n to the needy, uh, beggars, the poor, giving things to even animals, all these are giving. Uh, and we can give our energy, sacrificing. We have uh, energy, we use our energy to uh, help people, support people, uh, support anyone. We use our energy. That also is giving. Uh, giving our service or doing social work. That also is giving. Uh, working in hospice voluntarily, uh, helping the sick and then helping old persons, weak persons, uh, then uh, uh, sometimes uh, some people do, uh, they, they are uh, working as uh, firefighters, firefighters, they also are doing a lot of sacrifice. They even risk their own lives. I remember in uh, 1993, in January, there was a plane crash in Washington, D.C. The plane crashed on the 14th Street Bridge and many people fell into the icy water. And then some people drowned. Then a helicopter came to rescue them. When helicopter came, the, the, the rope the, that uh, he, helicopter man dropped for people to hold so that he could pull them out of water. That rope fell in front of a man. He gave it to another woman who could not swim. Rescue operators pulled her out of water. Then second time helicopter came and dropped the rope to the same place where there was little clear area in the water. Second time also he gave it to another woman who could not swim. And the rescue operators saved her life. Third time he came and dropped the rope right in front of this man but the man was not there. He drowned and he died. So he sacrificed his life to save people, two, of two bodies. And we know some firefighters sacrifice even their life. This is kind of physical giving. Uh, giving without expecting anything in return, not even a thank. Do, do it almost anonymously, without, uh, without expecting anything in return. That is the thought of uh, giving. 
and that sometimes can be practiced in three ways giving material things giving sometimes bodily parts some people donate their kidneys some people donate other parts of their bodies and uh, the the highest giving we cannot normally do but highest giving is sacrificing one's own life to save others the purpose is one does not want to uh, deliberately kill oneself but one even take even risk to risk to save others lives that is called the highest kind of giving second right thought is thought of metta loving friendliness thought of metta we call loving friendliness loving friendliness is uh, very uh, great thought uh letting go of our own ego we practice metta loving friendliness towards all living beings without any condition that's called unconditional love if we uh, practice this thought this is a thought loving friendliness is a thought and we can express it in words and we can express in thought and then we can even feel metta when we practice metta loving friendliness there are 11 benefits 11 benefits you may write down this 11 benefits number 1 you can sleep well sleep well you may not uh, uh, appreciate it that very very much now because you are young you can sleep well anyway but when you grow older you will see how valuable it is second is number 2 is getting up well without uh, grouch grouching grumbling and uh, feeling uh, very uh, not very good and you get up like like a flower very fresh third is that you will not have a nightmare nightmares whichever whatever dreams you have will be very present very good meaningful dreams then you have fa- you will be pleasing to other people others others means other people animals and uh, divine beings and so forth you always look very very pleasing pleasant likable person uh, then <clears throat> you will that is number 4 uh, right number 4 pleasing to others then uh uh you will be uh pleasant protect you will be protected by deities devas will protect you people say may devas protect you then you will not be affected by fire poison and weapon this simply means fire is the fire of greed greed is a fire F- 
fire of hatred. Hatred is fire. Fire of weapon. Weapon is what is is another fire. These are the three types of fires that you will not be affected. Uh, then fire, poison, weapon. You will not be affected by fire, poison, and weapon. Greed, hatred, and delusion is one type of fire. Greed, hatred type of uh, one type of weapon. Greed, hatred, and delusion is one type of poison. These three are called uh, weapon, fire, poison. You will not be affected. How can you be affected by, by uh, hatred? Because your mind is full of friendliness, full of metta. Then, then when you try to focus your mind on something, try to gain concentration, you can gain concentration better and quickly. Then your face always is very beautiful, always fresh. Your fre you, you, uh, speech is very pleasant, face is very pleasant. You always look very young, healthy. Then, uh, when we pass away, when we pass away, we pass away very peacefully, without any confusion. Then, after that, we will be reborn in Brahma realms, highest plane of existence in our samsaric journey. These are the benefits of practicing metta, loving friendliness. Then, third is compassion. Compassion is when we see somebody suffering in pain, in difficulties, or uh, the needy, our heart positively melt. Our heart becomes very soft, filled with compassion. So these are the uh, three types of thoughts. So, let me uh, go to little details so that uh, uh, you may remember them. When we practice right, when we have right understanding, I mentioned right understanding last time, uh, one of the 15 ways of right understanding I mentioned in my last talk. Now, when we have that kind of understanding, we naturally can develop a skillful thought, a skillful thoughts. Uh, then, when we have a thought, our thought can be can make us happy or unhappy. Thought can make us happy or unhappy. If we have a, a thought, angry thought, confused thought, thought of greed, we will be unhappy. If we have thought of letting go, thought of loving friendliness, thought of compassion, our life will be happy, not miserable. Then uh, Buddha pointed out, point, pointed us 
toward the skillful thought of uh, letting go, which is called generosity. Uh, as I mentioned, generosity, one kind of generosity is, as I mentioned earlier, material gift. And there is another generosity, which is called Dhammadana. Dhammadana. Dhammadana, or giving da Dhamma, or teaching Dhamma, is the highest kind of dana, highest kind of generosity. Why is that? Buddha said, when he teach Dhamma, people learn good things and follow them and their entire life will be in right direction. Entire life will be happy. And therefore, we make their entire life happy by teaching Dhamma. It's because they follow the Dhamma and live according to Dhamma and then they make their life very happy. In order to make the benefit of learning Dhamma, we, can, we must put Dhamma into practice. Uh, when we practice Dhamma, uh, we can live a very good moral, ethical life, which always brings us happiness. But when we give uh, material things, we can be also, in, we can be happy, but that happiness is, uh, uh, is subject to change. Uh, that means we will not be clinging to the property wealth and so forth, we like to share with others. Sometimes we are clinging to our body, our feelings, our perceptions, our thoughts and our consciousness. These are also kind of attachment. We cannot give them up until we totally liberate ourselves from greed, hatred, and delusion. So, uh, therefore, generosity has two aspects. One is material giving, other is spiritual giving. Spiritual giving is called Dhammadana. Uh, then, the, sec the, the first, second Right thought is called metta. When we practice metta, our uh, mind is always filled with joy, happiness, and peace. Uh, there will not be anger in us. When we are angry all the time, we become very unhappy. Angry uh, person uh, become very ugly. Angry person looks very unhealthy. Angry person create angry thoughts within oneself and angry with other persons. Uh, so when you get angry with somebody, uh, you cannot sleep well, you cannot get up well, you always feel very uncomfortable, pain, unhappy. Uh, so we try to cultivate metta to overcome our anger. Uh, angry person 
uh, is like uh, a sick person. A sick person uh, cannot taste food, uh, cannot uh, enjoy life, uh, because the t sick person's taste buds are not functioning properly. Uh, similarly, when we are angry, full of anger, our we cannot appreciate others. Uh, we can enjoy our uh, life. We always feel very, uh, very, very unhappy. And therefore, we have to be very uh, patient uh, to not to cultivate, develop our anger. Another thing is we must uh, cultivate our uh, mindfulness. When we cultivate our mindfulness, we immediately can detect and find out the moment that we are angry and immediately let go of that anger. Then uh, when we uh, develop compassion, we always uh, uh, like to help others when we develop compassion. So, uh, all the negative thoughts slowly and gradually fade away from our life. Uh, when negative thoughts are dominating our mind, then uh, our entire life is unhappy. When we, we do three things every day, thinking, speaking, and acting. If the mind is not uh, uh, happy, our words are not good, our actions are not good. Uh, when somebody, our mind is the, the chief thing, the major thing we have, the best thing we have, sometimes people can make it worse. When mind is uh, free from greed, hatred, and delusion, with such uh, mind, we always feel happy. If the mind is full of greed, hatred, and delusion, with that state of mind, if we say something, do something, the results follow us like the cart that follows the hoofs of the ox that pulls the cart. Just imagine, suppose there is a cart which is pulled by a horse or a, a bull. The cart is full of merchandise and uh, the road that the uh, bull has to pull the cart is not paved road. It is rugged, rough, full of mud, puddles, water, ups and down. And the cart is full of merchandise. The driver of the cart is not very compassionate person. He wants to deliver his merchandise from point A to point B as quickly as possible so that he can make several trips to make more money. So if the bull is slow, even if he's thirsty, thirsty, hungry, he has to pull. He, does, he has not volunteered to pull the cart, but he was forced and forcefully tied to the yoke of the cart, and then he pulls it. And similarly, when our mind is not uh, pure, full of, mind is full of greed, hatred, and delusion. Everything we do makes us very, very unhappy. Life becomes very heavy for us, just like the cart full of merchandise. On the other hand, when the mind is uh, full of generosity, loving friendliness, compassion, then whatever we say 
or do will produce very very pleasant result beautiful result which follows us very much like our own shadow how heavy is our shadow not heavy at all it is so light similarly when we do things with pure mind clean mind mind free from greed hatred and delusion then the results will be very very pleasant therefore second right understanding is right thought because our life as i mentioned at the beginning can be either pleasant peaceful happy joyful or miserable depending on the kind of thought we cultivate then <coughs> when we uh, uh, reflect on these uh, uh, thoughts we always when we reflect on these thoughts and see as soon as this un- unpleasant thought arises in our mind we immediately uh, fi- try to find out the cause or reason the reason is our mind is full of greed hatred jealousy fear and so on no parents can make us happy no teachers can make us happy no friends can make us happy we make ourselves happy because the mind is in us and others are outside so when we do things by ourselves to clean our mind make it uh, pure and clean full of good thoughts right thoughts then we will be happy by the way the right thought uh is right thought or wrong thought uh, our karmas our thinking makes our karma so we follow we carry our karma with us all the time wherever we go our mind is the our thoughts are there therefore always we try to cultivate right thought uh, and to cultivate right thought we must understand uh, the advantage of wholesome good thoughts and disadvantage of bad or unwholesome thoughts and so as i mentioned earlier uh, i think this half an hour talk would be better uh, so that you will not be too tired of paying attention now i like you to ask me any question anybody can ask me any question and then i'll be happy to answer your question <coughs> I have a question about the part you said earlier about having yes. nightmares. Could you please speak um, up? Yeah, sorry. Um my name is Pravit and I have a question about um earlier you said about preventing nightmares. Uh um so my question ab- what I, I did not I I could not hear you but could you speak a little louder? Yeah, um about the part you said earlier about nightmares and how to prevent them. Nightmares. Yeah. Sometimes you have uh, them. Uh All yeah, right. I used to have I used to have them like once every month or so. Uh-huh. A while ago, but then I started meditating every night and trying to be more generous and I noticed that I barely get them anymore. Is that the like the one of the most best ways to prevent them from happening using metta and loving kindness and also meditating right it is when you go to bed before you go to bed you practice metta loving friendliness you just uh, lie on your back 
focus your mind on your breath and breathe in and out very slowly focusing entire mind on the breath and then think and you may even say in words may all beings be well happy and peaceful may all beings be well happy and peaceful or if you want to make it little a little more elaborate you may say may i be well happy and peaceful may my parents be well happy and peaceful may my teachers be well happy and peaceful may my relatives brothers sisters and so on be well happy and peaceful may my friends be well happy and peaceful may all people who don't I, i even don't know we call indifferent person be well happy and peaceful may someone who doesn't like me be well happy and peaceful and may all living beings be well happy and peaceful when you recite this to yourself you very quickly fall asleep in sleep you will not have any nightmares next morning you get up very fresh very fresh that's what you have to do practice metta practice metta before you fall asleep and that will be very very effective very powerful <coughs> okay anybody has any other question yes um how do i um is it possible to meditate while laying down without sleeping it is possible <coughs> of course uh, it is possible to meditate uh when you sit up uh, when you lie down and try to meditate perhaps it may be difficult you may fall asleep but before you f- lie down in your bed sit up sit in a very comfortable way either on your bed or on a chair or on the floor you sit up and meditate the very simple beginning of meditation simple way to practice it you sit and put your uh, hands right hand on the left keep your body straight upright and relax and then inhale focusing your entire mind on your breath without using words concepts ideas keep your eyes closed and focus your mind on your breath and be entire pay attention you pay entire attention to your breath and notice inhaling and exhaling inhaling and exhaling just notice don't say anything in words when you do this maybe 2 uh, 3 minutes your body becomes very very relaxed calm and peaceful your breath becomes calm relaxed and peaceful your mind becomes calm relax and peaceful whatever feeling you arise you experience of course we feel the breath that feeling becomes very peaceful feeling your awareness of breath becomes very peaceful everything is peaceful body is relaxed mind is relaxed everything is calm and no 
greed, resentment can arise. You try that. That's a very, very effective way of beginning. And also, <clears throat> that will help you to focus your mind on your studies. <clears throat> and what you study, you can remember well when you focus your mind, when the mind is calm, relaxed. Whatever you study in that state will remain in your mind. So your memory improves, your health improves, your appearance improves. And therefore, it is very good way to go to sleep. First, meditate. And then, in the morning, in the morning, as soon as you wake up, instead of jumping out of bed, sit up and meditate for five minutes. Five minutes. And then you get up and do your work, your studies and preparing to go to school and so forth, you do that. So you do it twice a day, evening and morning. Morning, as soon as you wake up, is the best time to meditate because uh, you have good sleep, body is fresh, mind is fresh, and the environment is fresh, air is fresh, there, are, there may not be too many uh, noise in the house and uh, therefore that is the best time to practice. Yes. Any other question? Um, I have a question. Yes. So you said our thoughts are our, kam are our kamma. So does that mean that it is only our intentions that make up what our kamma is? Your intention is your kamma. If you, to make something a kamma, there must be five conditions. Suppose you, uh, let me say, uh, an ex give you an example of uh, uh, unwholesome karma, bad karma, wrong karma. Unwholesome karma, first is killing, is a, is unwholesome karma. In order to complete your killing, uh, you, there must be a living being, living being, one condition. Second is your knowledge that it is a living being. Third is your intention to kill that living being. Fourth is using a, a planning a way of killing it and employing that plan, implementing that plan, using that plan to kill. These are the five conditions on the uh, unwholesome side. On the wholesome side, suppose you want to practice generosity. It's a wholesome karma. Uh, or on the other hand, you say, suppose you want to, uh, the opposite of killing is saving life. Saving life. You will, you will notice a little animal. This is a living animal, that's number one. Second is your knowledge that it is a living animal. Third is your intention to rescue or help that animal. Fourth is a way that you plan to rescue the animal. Fifth way is to employ, employ or implement or use that method to rescue the animal. So the same five conditions on the wholesome side and the five unwholesome side. On the wholesome side, intention is a good intention, intention with uh, compassion, karuna, because you saw the, 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 the animal is suffering, compassion arises in your mind, and you do all these wholesome things, 
without expecting anything in return. When you rescue the animal, you don't expect anything from the animal. You just do it out of compassion. So, therefore, your intention is your karma. Without intention, if you suppose there is an uh, you accidentally uh, throw a rock and the rock landed on an animal, animal die. You did not have any intention to kill. On the other hand, uh, uh, you uh, clean a certain place and uh, along with that there was a little uh, animal. And uh, animal also will move away from the place you clean. Animal will, otherwise animal will be uh, trampled by somebody. You did not have any knowledge that there was an animal, but you clean it. Animal saved. That is not good karma, uh, because the intention was not there. You did not have, know that it was an animal that you want to rescue and so forth. All the conditions are not fulfilled to make it good karma. Similarly, all the conditions should not be fulfilled to bad, complete, uh, unwholesome karma. So, in other words, the intention is the thing that determines karma wholesome or unwholesome intention. Uh, you know, in the criminal law, uh, when somebody uh, attacks you, then in order to save your life, you also attack here and there. And your attack will land on the other person's vital organ. And the person dies. Then you will be charged for uh, killing someone. When you go to the court, the court want to find out whether you did that with intention or not. Pre is it a premeditated killing or not? If it is not premeditating killing, it is called culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Culpable homicide. Therefore, even in the uh, criminal law, you will be not charged for murder. And it's exactly the same way in the theory or law of karma. Intention is the absolutely necessary things. Very good question. Any other question anybody else has? <coughs> Um, I have a question to the second, the part where you explain. When you said going through with the plan, that doesn't mean that the plan has to succeed, right? Because if there's like a doctor who is trying to do the surgery for a patient, like the doctor has a plan for the patient, but like the plan to help save the life, but there is a possibility that it won't work and the patient could die even though he had a plan for it. So would the doctor still get the good karma of saving the life even though the patient died? Actually, that was a good question. Doctor has an intention to save the life. But the patient dies during surgery. Doctor's intention was not to kill the patient. Doctor's intention was to save the patients. And therefore, uh, his intention is a very good intention. Uh, but with this good intention, he could not save the patient. And therefore, uh, it is not, uh, it's a wholesome intention, but it is not uh, complete his karma. Because uh, Intention alone is not enough. There has to be 
it 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 has to be completed through action in those five conditions i mentioned intention is number 1 but other conditions also must be fulfilled for this intention he will have a very good peaceful men uh, conscience his conscience is very clear and uh, he will be happy about that uh, but he will not get full benefit of completing his wholesome his intention through action <coughs> yes okay. So, anybody has any other question? I think this is very good. It's quite lively uh, discussion. That uh, when you bring uh, bring up questions, and we can have some uh, sort of engagement in in a conversation. <coughs> That way, we can learn even more. I have a question. Yes. Um. So, like, when you're meditating, um, and like, you, um, you meditating, and then the distractions keep on coming, but you keep on ignoring them, and then you try strategy to get rid of them, and it keep it doesn't work. It keep on bothering you. Then what do you do? Okay, when you are meditating, if others uh, bothering you. and then <coughs> is it no i'm talking about like you know thoughts thought like, yeah thoughts yeah? bother you but you keep on trying to ignore it and then like try to stop it it's not working what do you do then okay uh when you have uh, uh thought or rem- memory or remember that somebody was bothering you remember has bothered you is that the so is that the question the question is like a thought from the past or like the future is starting to bother you and you can't get rid of it yeah thought of the past uh, or thought about the future we should not uh, uh, focus on that when you remember something that has happened in the past you have to forget it because past is gone you cannot bring the past to the present or if you are pondering over the future uh, or about something or somebody uh, that also you should not do let it go forget it but you keep the mind in the present moment this moment that is very practical thing past is gone you cannot bring it back future is is not come to you it is in future future what you have at hand is the present moment this moment and when we meditate we focus on the present or this moment to focus our mind on the present moment this moment we always come back to our breath breathe several times uh, perhaps very quickly and then notice the feeling of breath and then focus your mind on that feeling of breath that happens right now and then you will not be bothered by the past memories or the future Uh, pondering future things that we are going to do so therefore stay in the present moment in meditation i think remaining in the present moment not only in meditation but even in studies in conversations in doing what we are doing uh, even uh, many people uh, especially many active persons when uh, they even when they eat they keep they talk and sometimes they can choke food can go through through the 
uh, you know breeding apparatus and they have they will be you know chalked and so that will be sometimes problematic and therefore even uh, when we eat we focus our mind on our eating and we uh, recommend of course people to eat in silence don't talk while eating it is a uh, in the one hand bad habit and it will uh, uh, cause some trouble and uh, you even don't know uh, that you are eating you are just uh, putting things in your mind and swallowing very quickly and therefore keeping the mind in the present moment is absolutely necessary to make our life happier and more peaceful and in meditation we train our mind to do that in meditation amdrune yeah uh, if uh, it is difficult to control our mind from wandering during sit in meditation is it mm-hmm. a good idea to switch to walk in meditation for a little while that is good that's good walking standing meditation and walking meditation are very good to overcome your wandering mind uh, and sleepy mind yes when we feel sleepy uh, then we can do one of those two things and several other things Yes. Walking meditation is good. <clears throat> In walking meditation we must focus our mind first on our breath then slowly see how we can coordinate our breath with the movement of our feet. And then we can go let into little detail like becoming aware of lifting our fo- heel of our one foot and moving that foot forward and stopping that foot putting the foot down on the floor pressing it against the floor these are the details of walking meditation that we have to notice uh, at the beginning we simply uh, notice only inhaling exhale inhaling uh, lifting carrying foot forward and pressing at while exhaling lifting inhaling and moving foot forward and stopping and pressing while press, bringing down exhale those two actions we uh, we become aware of those two actions then when we want to do more to understand details then we go into uh, lifting the heel then lifting the whole foot and the moving the foot stopping the foot and then bringing the foot down and pressing it against the floor all these Uh, different different movements we notice then mind becomes fully occupied with the walking even getting our uh, concentration very good okay <coughs> okay uh, next week if uh, somebody else doesn't give the talk next week i <coughs> uh, talk on the third steps of the noble eightfold path third step is right 
speech. Okay. All, most of them are from New Okay, friends, uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy that you came and we meet uh, next week. Okay? Bye. Thank you, Hamdurani. See you next week. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. Okay.